उनमन सदा जग छवि भार ला झुक झुक पत रतन ये ललित है मगर ललित लेडी है आप इसको सही रूप में कहा जाए तो ललिता है जो कृष्ण जी की एक अष्ट सखियों में से बड़ी सखी थी वो डांट भी देती थी कृष्ण जी को कि तुमने राधा के साथ अन्याय किया ऐसा क्यों किया शी वॉज द ओनली अष्ट सखियों में थी तो ललिता कह सकते हैं ललित ललित राग है एग्जाम्पल किसका दू याद है चलिए भैरव का देते हैं आनंदेश्वर आर्दनारे नटेश्वर आनंदेश्वर आर्दनारे नटेश्वर प्रणमो परमेश्वर आदिनाथ तो महेश आदिनाद तो गणेश भैरव सर्व भूते आनंद काल काल महाकाल काल काल महाकाल जटा झूठ रुंड माल कंठ व्याल मुंड माल त्रिशूल डमारु वर कपाल सुमेर दर होत निहाल आनंद ये भैरव है अब ये कोशिश करके इसको मेल राग बनाया जा बना मतलब इस तरीके से प्रस्तुत करते हैं और ललित तो गा दिया आपके सामने तो हमेशा ये राग और रागनियों में ये फ़र्क है कि जो अगर आपको आराधना ज़्यादा करनी हो उस अरे की तो उसको बहुत पसंद है सच हम भैरव में मंत्र तंत्र बहुत गाते हैं जितने भी ए, क्या कहते हैं रिचाएँ हैं वो नियरली भैरव राग के आसपास घूमती है तो अगर आप आ, अच्छा मंत्र गाना चाहते हैं तो आपको आनंद देगा इसमें भैरव में और उसको आनंद देगा ललित में <laughs> ऐसा है और शास्त्रीय संगीत से भगवान के दर्शन तो हो सकते हैं हर भक्त गाता है हर भक्त गाया है मीरा ने गाया है तुकाराम ने गाया है मतलब सूरदास ने गाया है कोई ऐसा नहीं है जो भक्त कहलाया जिसको भगवान के दर्शन हुए No, uh, what he was saying, the other side of it. See, when I was young, when you are young, naturally your body is dominant, you know. So, though my parents are steeped in classical music, we completely hate it. We can't stand it. We are into Western music. Okay, <laughs> we just not one time have I ever heard it. If they switch it on, I will go. <laughs> But the moment I started meditating, suddenly the classical music just became suddenly music for me. What I could not stand, the moment I became quiet, immediately I want to listen to this. 
it just changed my whole perspective of the sound. Because I became silent within myself, suddenly the Indian classical music became so important for me. And wherever it is, I'm just almost like a beggar, I'm going there to listen. Madurai Mani Ayer is my father's favorite voice. If they turn on Madurai Mani Ayer, me and my brother will run away somewhere <laughs> But once I started meditating, there was no way. This is the only thing I could listen to. All the other music just fell apart in my mind, you know. So the connection between the right utterances of sound and meditation is so… so right there. Baba Ji ne khud siddh kar diya ke mai pahle I was addicted to western music and jab mai ne dhyan karna shuru kiya, yoga karna shuru kiya to mujhe mai pata nahi kab apne bhaartiya sangeet mein chala aya. To ye to pakka bata diya ke bhaartiya sangeet is the main sangeet of dunia ka ke jo aapko upar uthata hai. Jaisse kisi ne mujh ko ke ye kaha ke aap kaise decide karte hai ke raag ka time ye hai. बहुत साधारण बात है अगर आप थोड़ा सा माइनूटली ध्यान करें तो हवा में वो स्वर घूमते हैं जो हमें राग गाना है जिसको गाना चाहिए रादर गाना है नहीं नहीं गाना चाहिए वो आपको स्वर हवा में सुन सुनने को आते हैं हमारा भारतीय संगीत साइंटिफिक भी है साइंस ये है कि वही सुबह का ऋषभ है जो भैरव में है वही शाम का ऋषभ है जो जो मारवा में है वही शाम का ऋषभ जो पूरी अधनाश्री में है मगर तीनों अलग अलग है एक ऋषभ कोमल ऋषभ कैसा साइंस है और मैंने कहा ना कि हम लोग जो है बाईस श्रुतियों में गाते हैं हर एक राग की श्रुति जो है अपने आप बनती है जिसको अच्छी सही सही तालीम है उसको सही अपने आप बनती है उसको सोचना या कहना नहीं पड़ेगा कि भाई ये देखिए मैं ये श्रुति गा रहा हूँ अगर उसने कहा कि मैं ये श्रुति गा रहा हूँ तो वहीं खंडित मतलब ध्यान खंडित होके और वो श्रुति यूँ यूँ ही हो जाएगी तो हमारा शास्त्रीय संगीत तो आराम से भगवान तक ले जाता है क्योंकि ये वेरी शॉर्टकट रूट है और इसमें अगर आपकी कुछ योग शक्ति आपकी मिल जाए तो अद्वितीय हो जाती है उसकी डबल शक्ति हो जाती है आपको रॉकेट में बैठा के ले जाएगा that we learn as meditators, since we're talking about sound, is Aum chanting. And all auspicious occasions, we start with Aum. And why, why that? What is, what is the significance of Aum itself? Uh, it's a marriage of the three sounds. Aha. These three sounds are the only three sounds that the human system is capable of. Other sounds are only a mixture of this. You just experiment with yourself. If you remove this tongue or if you just keep it still, not using it, you will see the only three sounds that you can utter are a, ah, u and mm, the only three sounds you can make without the tongue. Tongue is being used to mix these three sounds and produce all the other manifestations of sounds. Mixing them in permutations and combinations, you can produce millions of sounds. So these three sounds are known as the basic sounds or the fundamental sounds in the existence. There are beautiful stories telling like this, if Shiva sits and utters three arms, a whole new creation will happen. It is not about… see, these things need not be looked at as a factual thing that is Shiva sat there and did he utter three arms, that is not the point. What is being said is, the whole existence is a reverberation. This is modern science. It's a vibration of energy. Where there's a vibration, there is bound to be a sound. Where there is a sound, there is creation. So all these sounds are a manifestation of these three sounds. These three are the root sounds. Like today we know, that uh, if you take a color television, there are only three color webs 
Using these three color webs, we can produce every other color. Similarly, using these three sounds, you can produce every other sound. I think uh, in the system of music that he has grown up, I think the first sound is always ah, simply ah, 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 ah. So in India, we have this thing that for children, we teach the sound ah. That's why amma, appa, this one, that one, whatever, everything is ah, 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 because ah is the basic sound. And it's not in one language, across the world, everywhere sound ah is the basic sound. So these three sounds, if you utter them, they have different things happening in the body. These three sounds are the only three sounds that exist in the system naturally. All other sounds you can produce by mixing. If you utter these three sounds carefully, if you sit in a certain way and utter these three sounds, you will notice if you utter ah, it carries the reverberation right across the body. It starts just about three-fourths of an inch below the navel and takes it right through the body because this is the only place where in the energy system, as there is a physical body, there's an energy body. This energy body comprises of seventy-two thousand nadis. These seventy-two thousand nadis meet only at one place, that is just beneath the navel. So this is the maintenance center in the body, this is known as a Manipuraka in the yoga. This is the maintenance center, even when you were in your mother's womb, your maintenance pipe was connected right here. So this is the sound ah. If you say ah, it spreads right across the body. These sounds have also been identified or ascribed to different forms of divinity. This is Vishnu's sound, his maintenance. <laughs> you know, among the three forces of Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, Brahma is the creator, Vishnu is the maintenance person, Shiva is the destroyer. These are three fundamental processes in creation. Sound ah is concerned with maintenance. So people who are seeking well-being start off ah. There are yogis who simply sit here and do mm, nothing else because they are not interested in that. They are just interested in destroying the limitations of who they are, nothing else. So the nadis themselves carry reverberations. If you utter o, oh, the sounds will spread in a certain way. If you utter mm, they spread in a different way. These three sounds are capable of touching all the seventy-two thousand nadis. This is something, uh, we have done it in a limited way, but we can explore this in a very big way. For every sound, we can make you conscious as to which part of the body touches. Which nadi will become active when you utter a certain sound? If you say, hey, what happens in the body? You know, I'm… very rudimentary sounds I'm using when you're meditating, I say, hey, that's all <laughs> I cannot sing like him. If I could, I would have done that for you, but because I cannot sing, I say, hey <laughs> Because every sound activates a certain dimension of your energy system. So these three sounds together as a combination activates the whole system because these are the three fundamental sounds. All other sounds are a manifestation. Some very fabulous experiments on the laboratory level has been done these days. How these three sounds can actually produce every other sound, three instruments producing these three sounds, other instruments which mix these sounds, just as like your tongue is doing, it produces every other sound. There's one person in Chennai who's doing a phenomenal amount of research in this direction. So, sounds can be used for well-being, for health. Just uttering, uh, I don't know if they have recognized that, but if you… Uh, if he goes on singing many ragas, I will tell you, if you sing this raga, your blood pressure will go down. You understand? Right now, I don't know the names of the raga, I am completely ignorant of those things, but if he sings various ragas, I will tell you, this raga, if you sing, your blood pressure will go down right now. And you can check it. One fifteen minutes raga, for the singer and the listener, your blood pressure will go down. Sare Gama Badane Gama Grodha Madha Moha Niva Nivara Gama Grodha Gama Grodha Madha
this people are experiencing in a concert. They may not be medically, you know, uh, measuring it, but people are experiencing, they listen to something and they become like this. They listen to a certain sound and become loving, they listen to a certain sound and become joyful, they listen to a certain sound and become aggressive. This is happening, isn't it? This is happening, isn't it so? Sounds are creating not only emotions, they also are changing the very chemistry of your system. So what kinds of sounds you're exposed to does various things to you or what kinds of sounds you are generating also produces… does various things to you. Why one of the first things that you do if you want to go on spiritual sadhana, first thing is shut up. Because stop uttering all the ugly sounds, just shut up. You just stop talking, so many things about you will change. Simply because you are no more causing the damage by uttering wrong sounds. So the classical Indian music is a… to a mathematical precision has recognized which sound can do what. And they have evolved these things in such patterns. I feel unfortunately there are exponents of music who know it by experience. There are certain uh, half-baked scientists who know something about the sounds and they know the benefits, they measure this and that. But there is no one person who is like him at the same time a scientist who can do all those things. When that happens, it'll be good or at least if two people get together like that, it'll be good where all these things can be explained in modern terminology. Right now what he does is purely in experiential sense. People know it happens, but if somebody comes and asks questions, how does it happen, they don't know. They say, it's all your rubbish emotion, that's all. You too identify with your Indian nonsense, so it happens to you <laughs> It needs to be put… put out. Somebody needs to work on this, where it is expressed as today's science understands, Today's science has a very rudimentary expression. Why I say this is, today's science has survived only because of the technological devices it has produced. If it does not throw out gadgets, nobody would value this science because it has no life significance of any kind, except for producing conveniences and comforts. So this is a different kind of science. Now, Sing, sitting here and singing about Shiva, what will you get? Nothing you'll get, but life will happen. I thought we came here so that life happens to us, not because we get a camera or a cell phone or a, some damn thing. We came here because we want life to happen to us, isn't it? The only reason why a human being is alive here is because he wants life to happen to him. So this is a science of making life happen to you. This is not a science of producing this and that. That also could be done, actually. Using the sounds, that also could be done. 
But that's not the focus, that's never been the focus of this culture. This is about making life happen in highest level of intensity and beauty. And music is the closest thing to meditativeness that way. से भारत में योग का एक हिस्सा माना गया है तो क्या आप ब्रह्म और योग को कैसे एक्सप्लेन करें शुरुआत करते हैं स्वर ही ब्रह्म है यहाँ से शुरुआत होती है जो स्वर है वो स्वयं में ईश्वर है जिसको हम इंग्लिश में साउंड कह दें या कुछ कह दें साउंड में इतनी शक्ति होती कि ब्रिज तोड़ देता है एक बड़ा सारा सख्त ब्रिज मगर वो मालूम होना चाहिए कि इसका सा कौन सा है इस ब्रिज का स्वर कौन सा है अगर वो पता हो तो उसको बहुत जोर से अगर उस स्वर स्वर को लगाया जाए तो ब्रिज क्रैक कर जाएगा दो तानपुरे एक तानपुरा मिलाते हैं उसमें दोनों स्वर अगर एक साथ हो गए तो एक तार टूट जाएगा उसके ऊपर रुक नहीं सकते कोई गाने वाला अगर एकदम एक्यूरेसी आ आप हमको पता ही नहीं चलता कि एक्यूरेसी क्या है हम इतने करीब चले जाते हैं फिर भी वो एक्यूरेसी नहीं होती है समझे जो गाने वाला या सितार वादक या स्वरोदवादक बिल्कुल सुर में बजा रहा कहीं हमें भी पता नहीं चल रहा है मगर जब उसका एकदम एक सुर लग गया कि ये सुर में लग गया तो उसका भी तार टूटेगा ये उसकी शक्ति को झेल नहीं सकता मतलब ये उसके एकात्मा तक एकात्मकता को झेल नहीं सकता जो ब्रिज तोड़ देता है मेरे पिताजी हम अजमेर में गा रहे थे तो एक 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 स्वर लगाया सा सा जिस भी स्वर से गा रहे थे सा लगाया तो छत फट गई एग्जेजरेशन नहीं है मैं कहता हूँ कि अगर सही सुर लग जाए उस उस छत का वो स्वर था फट गई इसको कहेंगे कि आपके गाने से हो गया उसके गाने से हो गया उसके बजाने से हो गया नहीं वो स्वर के वजह से हो Guru, can you explain how sound and science of yoga come together, or how sound and energy are connected? So let's go by the the modern interpretation of this today's science. Today's science clearly the established science, not the new age science. The established science clearly states that. the whole existence is just a reverberation of energy where there's a vibration there is bound to be a sound so the yogic culture always said the whole existence is just sound the root of that sound is shiva shiva means that which is not that which is not means silence so he is absolute silence when he moved there was sound he is a very fabulous story about this because this is a dialectical cu culture science is always expressed in the form of wonderful stories when shiva wanted to ma ma you know came to marry parvati parvat raj being a king a prominent king in the area just about uh, anybody who was somebody was there at the wedding big wedding they were all waiting for the groom nobody had seen the groom then he came he came with his ganas who are all freaks and deformed 
beings. When we say deformed, we are saying deformed. It is just that they didn't look like us, that's all. His friends did not look like us for whatever reasons, I'll not go into that now. And uh, they were ganas and yakshas, you know we're doing the yaksha festival today <laughs> And he himself was smeared in ash from head to toe and he was in an inebriated condition. He came like this, Parvati's mother, Meena, Sok, Shiva, this is the groom? They said, yes and she fainted. She couldn't imagine her daughter marrying someone like this. Then she was brought to consciousness and uh, she could not be consoled. And Parvati went and requested Shiva, please, just for my mother's sake, you are okay with me the way you are, but for my mother's sake, take on a more beautiful form. So he looked at her with his drunken eyes and uh, then he said, okay, and he became Sundarmurti, he became a very beautiful being. And everybody said, okay, let the wedding go on. Then they sat down for the wedding, he simply sat still there, unmoving. Then when Parvati's… Uh, I mean when the time came for the father to offer the bride, they took out the list, the family tree of the bride, the antecedents, her tradition, how the family, you know, everything, all our antecedents were spoken in great pride. Then they asked, okay, what about the groom? Where does he come from? Who are his, who are his parents? What are his antecedents? Where, what is his family tree? He just sat still, didn't say anything. When Parvatraj was getting anxious, who is he? What is his parentage? He said nothing. Then nobody said anything, people started getting agitated that he has no parents, he has no parentage, what is this? Then Narada took his ektara and did town. <laughs> so, he is of silence, but if you have to know something about him, he is sound. <laughs> So this story is not about a person, this is about the nature of the creation itself. From non-existence to existence, the first reverberation itself is a sound. This is not something that only we are talking about in the yogic culture, this is something that's recognized everywhere. Well, the Bible itself starts off like this. First there was a word and the word was with God and the word itself is God. Word is a human interpretation of a sound. Right now I am only making sounds. You are making up the words because you assume you know English language. When he was talking, I am sure Elizabeth was sitting there and it was just pure sound for her <laughs> There were no words for her <laughs> So sound is… Uh, you feel the words if you're chatty, all right? If you become very attentive, you'll feel the sound. If you become absolutely still, then you won't even feel the sound. Everything will be just one pure silence. And everything plays on the surface, but it's just there. Something else far bigger than the sound is just there. Now in the night, if you look at… look up in the sky, you will see a whole cosmos out there, okay? millions and millions of stars. But you see that only because your eyes are attuned in a certain way. But actually the largest presence out there is emptiness. It's the silence which rules the existence, nothingness which rules the existence. Sound and forms are a small happening. Today, modern science goes about proving to you, I'm sure, every musician feels it in some way. 
If you feed any sound, you know, oscilloscope, which is a sound measuring instrument, depending upon its frequency, amplitude and other dimensions, it gives out a form. This is how the whole science of what is referred to as mantra, yantra, tantra has been developed. Mantra is a sound, a pure sound is mantra. A lot of uh, the music that they're doing is pure mantra, no… no meaning, it's just sound. If you utter a sound, it gives out a form naturally. So if you observe carefully enough, every… every form is throwing out a certain sound. Based on this, in this… in this culture, based on this we created language. Language is not something made up for the sake of communication. Language is like the blueprint of the existence, that what kind of sound does this relate to? The corresponding sound is the name for this form. So if you master the sound, you have mastery over the form. So this whole science of wanting to use the sound as a passageway through the existence. Music is a beautiful way of doing it. There are other hard ways of doing it. Chanting. Chanting is a hard way of doing it, pure science. Music is a beautiful way of doing it. So, uh, in terms of spiritual process, Essentially, spiritual process means you're trying to move from the dimension of physicality, which on a subtler level is sound or vibration, into a dimension of non-physical or a dimension which is vibrationless, soundless. Essentially, that is the journey that you're trying to make. Because a sound has a form, a form has a limitation, only the formless, only that which has no form can be limitless. That is what is being referred to as Shiva. Shiva means that which is not. He has no form, no shape, no dimension, no nothing, no qualities. Every other god and goddess, we describe them, ascribe certain qualities to them. He has no qualities. At the same time, he is many things. He is a yogi, he is an ascetic, he is a debaucher, he is a drunkard, he is alert, he is drunk, he is this and he is that, everything at the same time. This is just to beat the logical mind because mind is always trying to establish, okay, what's the quality? No quality, he has no quality because silence has no quality, formlessness has no quality. So, music is a good vehicle to transport yourself to that last point. Sadhguru, I read in uh, the Mystics Musings that you clapped at the time of Dhyana Linga consecration and there was a crack on the Linga. Can you explain the significance behind that and uh, is, it, is it the sound or is it something else? You want me to clap now? <laughs> now, uh, that is not because of the sound. The power of the sound that Panditji was saying is, in the modern science we are trying to explain it off as resonance. If the Shruti is perfect on the two, naturally the string will break. As he was saying, the bridge breaking up is a classic example in every textbook, you know. Two soldiers are walking and a bridge will… a bridge which can take tons of weight will collapse just because two men are walking in unison. It's a classic uh, textbook example. So just about anything can be cracked with sheer sound, just by something like this. If two people just do this, if it is a perfect match, you can bring the building down. So we don't produce perfect musicians in the school, okay? <laughs> They'll bring down the building <laughs> Because uh, being in absolute unison can create a certain energy where one plus one is no more two, one plus one is a million. So, classical music 
when two people sing, Jugal Bandi is never about two people singing together. They are always setting a… this thing, because the musicians who crafted this music are aware or if two musicians are absolutely perfect, they could cause damage to the physical structure. People may just attain, their bodies may break, it is possible. The whole process that you see in the existence is from non-creation to creation, from unmanifest to manifest. But the other process is also happening. Today, cosmologists have recognized a whole galaxy will collapse into itself and become nothing. It will become a black hole, it's nothingness and nothingness is recognized as the most powerful space in the existence. Today they are beginning to call it dark energy and whatever else. So essentially, sound is a certain kind of… it is the first step into creation, from non-creation. But yoga is about uniting that which is creation and that which is non-creation. The word yoga means to unite, to uniting that which is creation. Creation means a limited form. It may be a planet, it may be a solar system, it may be a galaxy, but still a limited form. In our perspective, it may be large, we may think the universe is unlimited. That's our perspective, an ant thinks you're unlimited. Our perspective of what is size is from the size of who we are. You know, we are looking at something is large, something is small. Essentially, any form is a limited space. So, yoga means to unite that which is limited with that which is unlimited. So, what is a form? To make it formless. But at the same time, we don't want to lose our form, but we want to connect the limited with the unlimited. Yoga means the other word is to yoke or to unite. So, we want to yoke or unite the limited with the unlimited. We want to couple them in such a way that we have the experience of both. That is why we are teaching you Shambhavi. That means it's a twilight zone where creation and non-creation both happening at the same time within you. The process of creation is moving from unmanifest to manifest. But another dimension which is even more important is moving from manifest to unmanifest. So this is a culture which recognized the significance and importance of that and held that… held that as the foremost process in the existence. That is why we hold the destroyer as the Mahadeva. Destroyer means he is moving the manifest into unmanifest. So he is held as the highest because here we recognize that is the highest process. Making the unmanifest into manifest is a limited process. Making the manifest into unmanifest is the unlimited process. So that is the reason though Shiva is a destroyer, he is held as a Mahadeva. So, cracking of the stone is not because of the sound. I don't even know if it made sound, it made some sound but it's not the sound, it is a different process. Because if you… if any energy happens at a certain scale, sound gets produced. Have you seen the airplanes sometimes, the fighter jets are going and they, when they break the sound barrier, boom, like a bomb it goes. All that happened is an object moved faster than what it was within… from a certain limit, it crossed that limit of speed and suddenly there's an explosive sound, nothing exploded. See, nothing blew, all right, there's no fire but there is sound. When a jet crosses the sound limit, there is no fire, there is no explosion happening, nothing great happening in the engines of the jet, but still you hear a boom because an energy is created. So, the energy is the basis of the sound. The sound is not the basis of the energy. It's the energy which is the basis of the sound. Because there is energy in this body, I can make these sounds, isn't it? But at the same time, sound is the basis of energy on another level. It is because of sound that energy has happened. When there is no sound, there is energy but it is unmanifest, it is simply there. So today, modern nuclear science is explaining this in a certain way. You know, you can see virtual protons and virtual neutrons being created 
if you just as much as add energy outside, not connected to this chamber, if you just play energy around, you will see virtual protons get created. That means creation is happening in an absolute vacuum space. So, in a non-existence, which we are referring to as Shiva, existence is beginning to happen, the first play of energy. So we said this is Shakti, energy is Shakti. Once she begins to play, creation begins to happen. The first form of creation is always the sound, the first there was word. And it's both ways, see, we always try to understand everything logically. Logic always moves step by step, creation does not move step by step. There's no point trying to logically put it on a note, uh, blackboard and say, this, 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 this how creation happens, it's a silly way to go. There's only one way, if you cave into yourself, use whatever, you use a… you use music, sound or a sledgehammer, use whatever the hell you want to use. But if you just cave in, then you know it. form of music, which is not an entertainment form, but more an exploration of walking you through creation when possible to touch the Creator. If there is anybody whom you can call as the very embodiment of this music, it's him. We wish to acknowledge him for who he is.